Welcome. In the previous video, we discussed the variational principle and we understood where it comes from. Now let's apply it to an example. So let's take the Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator, which is what I wrote down here. Now, what we want to do is that we want to take some trial function and estimate the ground state energy of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Of course, we already know what it is. It's h bar omega over 2. Um, but, you know, that's, it's also good to take something that we already know so we can just familiarize ourselves with this problem or with this method, rather. So let's take a trial function, some constant a times e to the minus b x squared. Both b and a are some constants to be determined. And, of course, this wave function has the exact form of what you're looking for, which is going to make things easier. Um, but we will take some harder wave functions later on. Okay, and it's important to note that there's a lot of art in this method. So if you can kind of know or have an idea of what the form of the wave function is, um, that's really going to help things along and it's going to make your estimate way, way, way better. Okay, so we want to estimate the ground state energy. We know that the variational principle tells us that the ground state energy will always be smaller or equal to the expectation value of the Hamiltonian in the, this trial wave function space, okay? Um, before we begin, of course, we have this A constant here, so let's find out what it is through normalization. So we know that normalizing, we need that 1 has to be equal to the integral, of course, through all of space, right, so minus infinity to infinity, of A squared e to the minus 2bx squared dx. Now, this integral, we can, of course, pull the A squared outside, this integral is just extremely important. I cannot emphasize it enough. It shows up a lot in quantum mechanics. It shows up a lot in statistical mechanics and in many, many other areas. I think we may even have seen it already in this course, but I'm not sure. Um, but you have to know what it is. This is a Gaussian integral, okay? And that integral is, you, you can't really com calculate it normally. You need to use numerical methods or something like that. And the result is square root of pi over whatever is accompanying the minus x squared. So in this case, it's the 2b. Okay, don't include the minus sign. It's just 2b. Okay, so this is an incredibly important um, thing to know. So whenever you have like square uh, integral from minus infinity to infinity, the boundaries are extremely important. If you change them, this is not going to be true. Um, of e to the minus d x squared dx, this is square root of pi over c. Incredibly important. See that That's a c, by the way, not a zero. Don't get scared. Nothing's going to explode. Okay, so that was just a quick comment. So from this, of course, we find that a squared is going to be um, to be over pi and the square root, and thus a is going to be to be over pi to the one fourth. Okay, so that's A. Now let's begin calculating this. So let's plug in the Hamiltonian in here. And by the way, here I made some annotations. This is, of course, the kinetic part of the Hamiltonian. This is the potential part of the Hamiltonian. Um, we don't have to separate them, but because the integrals are going to get a little bit nasty, it is worth uh, to just separate these things, right? So just write them separately and I will calculate each one separately and then put it all together at the end. So the expectation value of the kinetic energy is going to be, that's going to be integral of minus infinity to infinity of, we got a squared e to the minus bx squared minus h bar squared over 2m. Then we got the second derivative of e to the minus bx squared dx. Now, a common pitfall here is that people tend to like make some sort of mistake with this derivative. Sometimes you're so used to just squaring everything that you just write e to the minus 2bx squared and then you take the der derivative of that or something. So don't make that mistake. Okay, so let's now take these two derivatives. Um, so well, we can pull the a outside first. The integral there, e to the minus bx squared. And, well, I guess we could have pulled the, these constant outside. I forgot about that. 
but it doesn't matter. Okay, now we take one derivative. So we're going to be left with still one deriv derivative. And then we have minus b times 2x, right? We take the derivative of this. So we have to take it's the derivative of the exponential times the derivative of what is inside of the exponential. So we get minus 2bx uh, e to the minus bx squared dx. Okay, now let's take out all of our constants. So this two will cancel out this one. The minus sign cancel out. So we get um, a squared h bar over m. Now integral and e minus bx squared. And we, now we take the other derivative. So with this derivative, um, oh, we could have taken out this b too. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now we get deriving this one term that will simply be e to the minus bx squared, right? Because we, we take the derivative of x and leave this b. And then we get plus the derivative of this part, which is going to be the same as before, minus 2bx times this thing. But there's now another x. So we get minus, I guess I can get rid of this then. So we get minus 2 b, and then we get x squared, e to the minus b x squared, dx. So now just multiplying through, we get two integrals. So one is going to be minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus 2bx squared dx. And the other one is going to be minus 2b integral of minus infinity to infinity of x squared e to the minus bx squared dx. <clears throat> okay, so we have to now integrate this. The first one is easy. It's just a Gaussian integral. The second one requires a trick, okay? And this is also an incredibly common trick. So I really recommend that you learn it because it will appear extremely often, okay? I cannot stress it out enough. Okay, so integral numero uno, this one. So a squared h bar m b. And this is, of course, square root of pi over what is inside, 2b. And then we get minus 2b. And what do we do about this? Now, notice the following. If we had minus e to the minus bx squared, and we were to take the derivative with respect to b, oh, by the way, this is a 2b, sorry. So with respect to 2b, I made a small oopsie there. Okay, with respect to 2b, well, what would we get? So that would be minus, another minus comes down, so we get a plus, and then we get x squared e to the minus 2b x squared. Okay, so this is incredibly important because now we can rewrite what we had in here as this. And this is an incredibly common trick. So please do derive this. It, it might be weird deriving with respect to, to b, but what you can do is rewrite this and do, okay, let's call beta is going to be 2b. So you write this as minus beta and you just derive with respect to beta. And it looks like a, a bit better like that. Okay, but the point is that this holds true either way. You get minus, x, the x squared basically is a constant here. That's why it happens. So we can now rewrite this integral as the integral of minus infinity to infinity of minus e, well, um, I almost forgot to write the derivative. So minus derivative with respect to, let's keep the notation of beta. So let's keep this notation. Minus uh, beta of e to the minus beta x squared. Okay, remember beta is 2b, so I might as well just have written minus 2b here. Okay, it's the same. But the important thing is that we now got rid of the annoying uh, x squared that didn't allow us to use the usual computation for a Gaussian integral. So now that it is gone, 
we know exactly what that integral is. So let me just write all of this again, blah, 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 minus 2b. And now we, well, those cancel out, so we get a plus. Now we get d, d beta. And this is simply going to be square root of pi over beta. So we now need to take the derivative with respect to beta. So actually, maybe I can copy this. I'm, I don't really feel like writing it again. So copy and paste. And what have I done? OK, that, that's not what I intended. So how can I? One second getting used to this program okay nice maybe there i don't know okay that's good gotta be an easier way to do it but it's still good all right so uh, wait when did i go from 2b to 2 beta sorry about that to b to b okay and now we just take the square square root of pi and now derive one over square root of beta so this is basically d, d beta of beta to the minus one half, right? So when we derive it, we get minus one half beta to the minus three halves. All right. Um, and what is beta? Well, beta is simply 2b. So this is 2b to the minus three halves. But we're also multiplying by 2b here. So if we consider that, this 2b will cancel out the three in the exponent basically so instead of having minus three halves we will have minus one half okay and let's now write the value for a so a a squared is to be over square root of pi and then we have all of this blah 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 and square root of pi over 2b and what else then we have minus and let's see, we have one half and then square root of pi over 2b. So we can cancel this square root of 2b over pi with these ones, right? We can factor it out and they cancel out. So we are left with h bar squared b over m times one minus one half. So that's one half, and we get that the expectation value of the kinetic part is h bar squared times b over 2m. All right, that's the first part. Now let's go for the potential. So let's calculate the expectation value of the potential. So this is going to be integral from minus infinity to infinity, again, right? a squared e to the minus to bx, this time there's no derivative, so we can just put it all together right away. There's no issue there. And what is the potential? It is one half m omega squared x squared. Oh, this is squared, by the way, um, dx. All right. So there's a lot of constants here that we can just take outside. So we get a squared m omega squared over 2. And then what is this integral? Does it look familiar? So minus infinity to infinity of x squared e to the minus 2b x squared dx. So again, we have to do exactly the same thing. It's the same thing that we saw here. And in fact, we don't really need to uh, calculate it again. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what was our result it was square root of pi i think it's square root of pi times the yeah it's a bit messy let's calculate it again that's what i get for being messy all right so maybe let's change colors just to emphasize that we're doing this here so what is this integral this right there so that integral is going to be again derivative with respect to beta we are going to call beta is going to be minus 2b. So that integral we can rewrite as minus, right, because of that minus sign which will come down if we take the derivative with respect to beta, we need to cancel it out. That's going to be minus integral from minus infinity to infinity of derivative with respect to beta of e to the minus beta 
x squared dx. Just to make sure, if we were to take this derivative, we would get minus x squared down here, the minus cancel out, and we are left with what we had before. Okay, good. So this, of course, we can take this out, and the integral is square root of pi over 2, well, 2b, yes, but we are calling it beta. All right, great. And let's now take the derivative. So we get minus square root of pi, and then we get minus one half beta to the minus three halves. Okay, and of course, rewrite beta as minus 2b. So we get minus, oh, the minus sign cancel out, so no minus. We get plus. Um, let's see, so we get plus square root of pi over 2, and then we get 1 over, I guess we could, I could have just written like that, but it doesn't matter, so 2b to the 3 halves power. Okay, so that's what we got to plug in here. So the expectation value, actually let's switch colors again. So the expectation value of the potential is going to be a, which is um, a squared is, sorry, it's not like, it's, um, what is it again? 2b over pi, that's what it is. 2b over pi times m omega squared over 2, and then the result from this. So times square root of pi over 2 times, and then we get, um, let's write as 2b to the minus 3 halves power. I went back in my notation. Um, okay, so we can see we have 2b times this square root. So we're going to get 2b over minus 2 halves, which is just 2b over uh, to the minus 1, of course. So we get m omega squared, right? This cancels out a big part of this. Um, the pi's cancel out, and we're left with 4 times 2b. So basically, m omega squared over 8b. So what is the total energy here? So the total energy is going to be the sum of these two parts, of the kinetic and potential parts, which is going to be h bar squared b to m plus m omega squared 8b. Okay, so this is the energy that we are estimating for the ground state. But you might notice that there is this constant b still in here, and also this doesn't resemble the h bar omega over 2 at all, that we know is the result. And the thing is that now comes the big important step in this variational principle method. So what we will do is we will now minimize this energy with respect to our parameter b. Okay, so we will take b as a parameter and we will now move it around and see, okay, for which value of b is this the, the smallest? Because our trial function was ae to the minus bx squared. So now we are, okay, what value of b would mean that this energy is the smallest possible? We are going to be variating this value of b to find that. That's why this is the variational principle. That's the, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's why this is called that way. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to b of this energy and set it equal to zero. That's what we will do. So this first derivative is super easy, barely an inconvenience, as you know, a, a wise man would say. And this part, you know, just a little bit trickier. It's going to be, this is b to the minus 1, so we get a minus sign. We get minus m omega squared over 8 b squared equals 0. So let's now isolate b. So we get h bar squared over 2m. This is equal to m omega squared over 8 b squared. So b squared, we multiply there and we leave it alone. So we get b squared is m squared omega squared divided by 4 h bar squared. So basically b is going to be m omega divided by 2 h bar. Okay, let's plug it in to the formula for the energy. So let's take this and plug it in there. So our energy then, our estimate, is going to be h bar squared over 2m times b 
B, which is m omega over 2h bar, plus m omega squared over 8 times 1 over b. So we get 2h bar m omega. Let's see. m's cancel out, square cancels out. This cancels out some of this. We're left with a 4. m, m, um, h bar, h bar squared. So what survives? We get h bar omega divided by 4 plus h bar omega divided by 4. If we add them up, we get 2 h bar omega divided by 4, or simply h bar omega divided by 2, which is exactly the ground state energy of the harmonic oscillator. So just by guessing which form the, the wave function has, we were able to get the energy without having to go through the extreme trouble of actually solving the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator, which, as you might recall, is not particularly fun. I mean, it is fun, but it's long. Um, so that is the magic of this method. Of course, here we managed to found the, find the exact value because of the fact that we took a trial function that had the exact shape of the actual function. If we had taken a worse guess, we would have gotten a worse answer. And in fact, if we pl you plug in this value of b, you will find that we have exactly the actual wave function, um, which is, of course, something... That is the reason why this answer was so good. But... It's still, you know, it's a very good way to learn about this method. So I hope this was useful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment, subscribe, and maybe tell your classmates about this if you found it useful at all. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.